you have to be good at time management to be doing Microsoft Stanford DJing and <laughs> YouTube. How do you manage it? The short answer is that I don't. <laughs> okay. How does one get to work for Microsoft? One thing I would say is that communities help you a lot. What I actually want is for you to not sack me now. <laughs> what? So my plan actually worked. <laughs> that's that's very cool. That's very cool. What's the salary like for for a Microsoft, somebody that works in Microsoft? I saw like a 180k to and I was like, ah god, when wow. Meet Adora Umwodo, a mixed reality engineer for Microsoft and a versatile software engineer. In this video, we'll talk about her story, how you can get started in tech, and her advice for people looking to flourish in this space. Without further ado, let's get to the video. This episode of The Leaderboard is brought to you by MTN. Find out how you can get nearly double your data later in this video. If we're going to track back to your much younger self, what was the motivation for going into tech? The short answer is busybody. Okay. So growing up, uh, I'm like the last born and the only girl. And the age difference between my immediate elder brother and myself is quite a lot. And then I just sort of noticed that at some point there was a disconnect because I was still what like in primary school and then they were already in secondary school and my dad was like, uh, computers are the future. So I'm going to send my children to computer school. And he sent them to computer school and he bought a computer in the house for them to be using to learn like when you learn whatever you go to computer school to learn come home and then practice so i just noticed that uh, uh, suddenly people that were playing with me outside and i'm playing inside on computer i went to meet them i'm like okay we should teach me how to use them let's all play in this place together and for me that was where it sort of started from because getting into using computers i found it very interesting so it started from there and then I also found Coral Draw, and then I was doing very ugly complimentary cards. <laughs> they were very ugly, but at least I was creating complimentary cards. Learned how to type at a very young age, and I used to type really fast. My first composition that I ever typed, my dad actually has it printed and laminated Aww. somewhere in the house up till today. You said at a very young At what age was this? I was like, so this whole drama started yeah. from like six years old. So it's like six, wow. seven, eight. Okay. You know, okay. Um, I know that I wasn't up to 10 because 10 was when I got into secondary school. So this whole thing happened between six and nine years old. At this between six and nine years old as well, I got into programming. So I was that child. I found Visual Basic again, when you just go into random internet rabbit holes and you find nonsense. So it was like, okay, when they tell us this formula, I'll go to code and then I'll program that formula. And then I'll use, I'll add like the numbers six plus two minus eight or whatever. And you were not 10. I was not 10 yet. Okay. Prior to being 10, you were already very interested in computers. Yeah. And you, that interest sort of spurred, you know, you into I think you majored in computer science in mm -hmm. Unilag. Yes. I'm also from Unilag. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, and you, you got a first class degree. How was the journey like between that period and uh, graduating in computer science? What was your highlights? I don't want to say I'm not the brilliant type because I mean I am. But for me, because I'm all, I've, it's not today I started doing many things. Even right from uni, I've been doing many things. So I'm very calculative, I guess is the word. At the beginning of the semester, I'm like, I reach out to people ahead of me, like, okay, this course that you said was hard, tell me about the lecturer, tell me about the ones that you think are easy or whatever. And then I'll plan like, okay, I'm targeting to get like a 4.6 CGPA this semester, meaning that I should get A's in the easy courses. If I get one C here and I get a B here, I should be fine. So when everything scatters and that plan doesn't work, um, I start panicking. So it's either like the next semester, I have to do really well to balance it, or I have to go and meet the lecturer and be like, yo, please mark my script again. I think you made a mistake because there's no way I failed this. And then I did that. The first time I got like a D, they marked my script again. I got a C. I'm like, you see? And then the next time, because I apart from like A's, I was having like no A's, No intended. <laughs> so the first class thing wasn't maybe because I was always reading in front of my laptop mm. or like, you know, every single second of every day. But there was 
there was intention to how I wanted to do things. Because I was doing a lot. I was a working student. Every... I don't know if my mother is going to watch this video, but she'll be <laughs> all right. But like Friday night, Saturday night, I'm outside. Mm. So you can't be living that kind of life. And then I had to just make sure that at least there was a balance. So I tried to create that for myself. You said you were, you were a working student. What were you doing? You know the normal internship thing that you do? Um... I think it's called CWS or whatever. Okay. The oh, six months okay. IT thing that you do. But wait, were you working in tech or I was working I was or? working in so I did my internship as a software developer in an agency. Okay. So I was okay. I wasn't it wasn't like in a tech company, but I was it was a tech role. But okay. And then I did whatever I did there, finished after six months, and then they were like, Okay, and you've proven yourself, we really like you. Um, if there's anything you want as you're going back to school, let us know and then we're happy to support you. I was oh. like, yeah, what I actually want is for you to not sack me now. <laughs> what? I wanted to like, I told them that, yo, I know I'm going back to school, but please, I want to keep working for you. Because it was a very small company. And to be honest, I didn't know many companies doing tech stuff here. At that time, it was still early on. It was like before Pistak and Flutter Wave and like mm. before all these things. And then I didn't know what was going to happen if I chose to stay in Nigeria when I graduated. And I didn't want to now like, you know, end up in a bank or something. Cause it was even bank no shade itself. To, no to shade. Bank. No shade. But it was even bank that I almost did my internship in, you know, initially. Wow. But I fought You're smiling. <laughs> I, I have a similar story, but I fought fine. <laughs> I fought for the agency thing and I quarreled with my dad because of it. Cause he literally called the bank wow. and he's like, you come. But last minute I'm like, yeah, I'm not coming again. So it, it was a big deal. So I said, it's a lie. We die here. We hold this job <laughs> so that you will not hire okay. another person. And then that was it for me. So because of that, in final year, I was a working student, but I mean, they knew. So they were nice about, you know, not expecting me to come to the office all the time or joining some meetings that I didn't need to join in because it might be clashing with some of my classes. And then I, I somehow, you know, made it work with school and a bunch of things I was doing. Graduated and then I went back to work there. So my plan actually worked. <laughs> that's, that's very cool. That's very cool. I read in an interview where um, your elder brother again sort of motivated you to go to an Ivy League. So he motivated me to go to business school. Business school. Oh, okay. I chose the school myself because okay. I'm like, I'm sorry. If I'm going if I'm going back to school, it better be worth it. It has to bang. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you went to Stanford. I'm still there. <laughs> oh yeah, no, no, okay. You you are in Stamford Stanford. Stanford. Yeah. Stanford. Yeah. How how is that like? I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> If you're an MCN subscriber, you can try dialing star 121 hash and see what response you get. From my experience, you can actually get almost double the data you would normally get for the same amount. In our case, we saw 80 gigabytes for 10,000 Naira and 150 gigabytes for just 15,000 Naira, which is so cool. Okay, that's nice, but MTN redesigned their My MTN NG app and it has quite a lot of useful features apart from the updated design. One thing I've always wondered about was how much data I use. On the My MTN app, right from the homepage, you can see your airtime and data balance. And when you click on the quick link button right here and select the usage history, you can see who you called and exactly how much that call costs you. You can of course see how much data you spent within a certain period. And this is mine. Clicking on this quick link button again and going to the offer page shows you the current deals available and you can crack the egg to view your offers or scratch the Tuesday I Wolf and hot deals to review your offers. And there are so many offers that you can take advantage of instead of just buying data the regular way. There's even one where if you recharge 400 Naira, you get 2,400 Naira to call any network. And that's just wow i like that you can also manage multiple phone numbers and you can see your nin linked numbers and you can even link your number right there on the app for me i linked my 5g modem line to my main phone line right there on the app and it was very easy to do you can recharge on the app in new ways you can read news from publishers like bbc business day this day and the leadership you can share or borrow airtime and data and you can even shop with Mano on their app and you can browse a huge variety of options. Do download the My MTN NG app with my link in the description below and guys, the first 50 people who download the app and fill the form with my link in the description below get 1000 Naira airtime from us. Don't worry if you already have the My MTN NG app, all you have to do is just fill the form in the description below and you're entered. Now back to the interview. 
<laughs> I was I was literally complaining yesterday because I'm not doing a you know the full MBA program. It's like the experience of an online MBA, distance learning for a full year. You're learning different things on you know leadership, management, finance, and it just made sense to me. So I did it. <laughs> And I'm still that's, doing it. That's that's very that's very cool. So speaking of work now, you work at Microsoft. Yeah. This this person has a big CV. By the way. <laughs> so you work at Microsoft. How do you, how do you manage? I also want to say that she's a DJ too. <laughs> so how do you manage? And you have a YouTube channel. Yes, I do. Yes, you have a YouTube channel. By the way, subscribe to her YouTube channel. Please subscribe to her YouTube yeah, channel. To be linked it in the description. Mean a lot to me. So you you share tips, I think, on your on your channel for upcoming developers. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's like productivity, career growth, software engineering, different things. So I have two questions for you. First one is how do you even manage all of these things together? Is there like a, a scheduled timeline? I mean, obviously, you have to be good at time management to be doing Microsoft, Stanford, DJing, and <laughs> YouTube. How do you manage it? The short answer is that I don't. Okay. <laughs> I have help. Okay. A lot of help. I had to hire an assistant and she's been very helpful with like all this admin work that I don't get to do by myself. And I multitask a lot. So like with me, two laptops are open at the same time and I'm context switching back to back. Don't try this at home. I don't, I've been doing it all my life. So it's something I have, I have gotten used to over time. Interesting. How does one get to work for Microsoft? How do you get that job? And how, if anyone maybe watching this wants to try to apply how how does that happen one thing i would say is that communities help you a lot uh one thing that i have noticed and not even with microsoft but like with people in tech in general is that you work in communities you volunteer and not just joining the community to go for events and then going back mm. home when you've met the tech people that you like and you've taken selfies, selfies. With them. these communities have founders right and they are community managers and most times are their friends you volunteer for these communities you get to work with them these people sometimes might not be able to connect you to these opportunities or when some opportunities come share them with you and then i mean apart from that the there's also okay. apart from the community thing there's also you trying to attract recruiters to you and that's what I was even doing without knowing I was doing it. So as early on, I was already into public speaking and my okay. YouTube channel and posting articles and people were noticing and I didn't realize that that was happening, especially on LinkedIn at the time. People are watching a lot more than you think. So you want to put yourself in that position where they can even find you and you can be stealable. It's not only experience hires that they steal. They still, they take or steal talented junior engineers as well. So it's not a thing of, oh, I don't have experience. That's why if you do the right things and you position yourself properly, you will attract people. So for me, I would say, apart from the normal going to apply for jobs and all of that that you do, focus on impacting communities and using the networks that you make there to help you get these opportunities and also focus on trying to attract those yeah. recruiters. Optimizing you. your profile and like sharing stuff. You know, speaking of something that you mentioned in sharing your story, like also writing you are an author. Yeah. See another fe <laughs> another feather in the cap. You are an author. You wrote a book on cloud engineering. Yeah. Cloud engineering for beginners. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why did you write the book and who is the book for? Yeah. So it was just a manifestation of my time at Microsoft. Exactly. Mm. So at the time when I even made that decision to write, to teach about the cloud, I didn't know whether it was going to be a book or a series on my YouTube channel or a series of articles. I didn't know what it was going to be, but I knew I was going to teach it. Okay, for someone looking to just get started in maybe cloud engineering or engineering in general, what's the first thing you would advise them to do? I mean, apart from getting your book though, <laughs> what's the first thing you would advise them to the do? The first thing would be to learn the fundamentals of computer science. I say this thing a lot where building your computer science career is like building a house. And if you don't get the right fundamentals, that means you're not laying the right foundation. And at some point, when the house sinks, it's going to become very problematic. So if you actually learn the fundamentals, not only would it be easy to even switch between computer science disciplines, your knowledge in whatever field that you now decide to measure in would be solidified. So that would be the first step for me. What's the salary like for 
for a Microsoft, somebody that works in Microsoft? I cannot answer that question. So directly. Can you give you a range or um I went to I've forgotten the name of this website to it's not Glassdoor. It There's an another one. No, no, it's not indeed. Just because I wanted to check, you know, like what Microsoft's employees in the US are paid. And then I saw like a 180k to and I was like, ah God when wow. <laughs> Because I mean, I'm in Nigeria, right? And I'm paid Naira. But I don't remember. Levels or FYI. Thank you. I've never heard of that. Yeah. So like, okay. I think it's a website. People go just to give you a sense of how much, you know, these companies pay in these different locations. Because I mean, SF is different from Redmond, different mm. from Atlanta, all of different that. Different from so that Lagos. If, different from Lagos as well. So that if you're trying to, you know, interview with in them, place. you can, at least you have something that you can use to negotiate where you want your base to be. So I, I found, you know, salaries for different regions in the US and Canada, but I didn't see for um, Europe, Middle East or Africa region. So I can't really say, but I know that if you go to levels or FYI, you'll be seeing like in the hundred Ks, 150 180 and that's nice money to have if you ask me <laughs> but you are not i'm not any 180 yeah. i promise you don't, you don't want to disclose okay it's fine I, I do not want to disclose what advice would you give to men and women looking to do what you're doing or start out into this journey just look into the camera and um life is short and you don't have people think life is long i mean it can be long but it's also short if you think about it because you don't know where you're going to go you don't have as much time as you think you do if there's something you really want to do go and figure it out and start doing it today if you need help i think now is the best time to start doing something because there's now a lot of help on the internet that did not exist 20 years ago if you fail you would learn what doesn't work and the next time you decide to do this thing you wouldn't do that thing either way you have nothing to lose and everything to gain so just go and do it very very profound thank you so much <laughs> if you found this video useful do hit that like button and of course click the subscribe button and the bell icon beside it so you'll be the first to know when we post videos like this click here to see our video with mr who's the boss and how he got over 5 billion views on youtube and click here to see our video with Rodney, who is one of the most followed TikTokers in Nigeria.